Hi, welcome to Chase Life. Uh, my name is Randy Chase, and uh, we we do a lot of hiking. Uh, we're planning a through hike of the AT next year, and uh, so hence uh, our first review here um, is going to be on a product called the Grub Can. Uh, so we're going to open up the box we got from Grub Can. We just ordered this, and uh, come very well protected. Um, you can get these in different colors. I got it in orange with blue rings. You can get them blue with orange rings, red, and different things. Uh, huh. It comes with some stickers, which, you know, is a very much a hiking company thing to have stickers. Um, and a packing slip that's been personalized by Holly. So thank you, Holly. Um, I am not being paid by Grub Can. I have not been uh, in free product. This is uh, just my opinions. Um, so, first of all, why a grub can? Um, we, we, when you look at uh, doing a, an overnight, or in my case, a, a through hike, you're faced with looking at different options um, to protect your food from bears and from rodents. You know, rats, mice, etc. Um, getting into your food that would kind of make a be a bad thing. It's also bad for bears if they get near food. Um, they become used to humans. So we need to do things to keep them away. Now there are three main options that people use. One is to hang a bear bag from a tree limb. The other one is to use a product called an ursac. And the third one is to use a bear canister. So each of these have their positives and negatives and some and also where you can use them. Some places regulate, uh, they don't allow certain products to, and you have to have another product. For example, much of the, there's a good portion of the PCT, the Pacific Crest Trail that requires a, a bear can. And there's five miles or so right now, the AT that requires a bear canister, but you don't have to actually stay overnight in that five miles, which is the way most people get around that. However, there's been talk from the Appalachian Trail Conservancy that they may have more requirements or change their overall requirements to, to bear canisters because they've had some failures of the other methods, the uh, ursac and the bear hanging. Um, so, so that is one reason I'm looking into the bear canisters as a way of future proofing, you know, if, if changes should happen, but also to see if, if, if it's really a, a better way to go. So, what are the positives and negatives of the, of the uh, three options? The bear hang, uh, the main positive is it's extremely lightweight. I have a, a couple of bear bags. This is one. I mean, it's, it weighs maybe a, an ounce and a half, really nothing, and it's quite nice. Um, then you have the, the, the Dyneema twine that goes with it and a little sack that you can fill with rocks to toss over the branch. Um, so really big advantage is the weight. The yeah, second advantage is that it's only as big as your food is. So as you use up your food, it compresses down. So it fits pretty easily into your pack. Even when full, it fits pretty easily in your pack because it, it's not hard sided. Um, the main, main negative, um, other than possibly not being allowed in certain areas, um, is you have to have the right tree and the right branch. You've had a long, hard day, and now you've got to go figure out how to hang your, your bear back. Um, may not be that easy uh, depending on your level of athleticism. That's the positives and negatives of a bear bag. I'm not saying I won't use a bear bag. I still might. I'm really liking ultra light. Um, I've got my base weight pretty far down at this point. Um, so then there's the ursac and so there are some positives and negatives of the ursac. Uh, one positive is is cost and yeah, by the way the bear bag was, was relatively inexpensive too. Ursac is, is sub hundred dollars. It's uh, not very expensive. It is also collapsible uh, so it fits easy and will get smaller as you use up your food and you can just tie an ursac to a tree and call it done. Uh, the negatives are that some bears have figured out how to get at ursacs. They know that there's food in there. They will squish your food even if they can't get inside. Uh, there's been reports though of some ursacs being violated. Um, and so in that case, uh, in some areas are not recommended. Um, they can also get wet and then they get kind of soggy and heavy if they're wet. Um, yeah, so again, they are a product that a lot of people like. Um, so. 
and, and, and in general, you know, hike your own hike. If bear bags work for you, great. If earth sacks work for you, great. Um, so we're just looking into the bear canisters. So now there's a number of bear canisters that you can get. Um, the most common one I think I see around is the bear vault, which comes in different sizes. It's a clear plastic uh, with, a, with a lid on it. Um, then there's a few others that are out there. Uh, positive of the bear vault, I think, is that, um, well, some of these bear canisters have one positive in that they could be used as a chair. And um, if you really want a chair and you're willing to take a chair, you know, it's going to be even the lightest chairs are one pound. So that would help kind of justify the extra weight of the bear canister. Um, I'm not willing to take a chair because I don't want to take one pound. Um, so in order to keep my base weight low, I started looking into the different bear canisters that were available. And the bear vault, the one thing I don't like about it is the form factor. It's just, it's really squat, it's wide. Um, it, for those who put it on top of their pack, uh, which is probably one of the more common things that people do, it, uh, it just looks big up there. So um, there's a couple other bear canisters that um, use tools. Um, you have to have like a, a quarter or something to turn a lock and I'm not real interested in that if you lose your tool or don't have a tool you're in trouble. Um, the bear vault uses some a sequence of latches. So when I started looking around I came across grub can and keep in mind that uh, we'll understand that grub can had a different product out on the market and in fact if you google it or look at YouTube videos and do searches for it most of the results are going to be for their older product, which is a long, clear, cylindrical bear canister using a similar locking mechanism for the top. Um, that looked like a little unfortunate. It looked almost unwieldy to deal with in terms of putting it in or around your pack in terms of how long it was. Uh, so that, for me, that was didn't seem like it would work. But then they came out with this new product. And what immediately attracted me to it was the fact that they used carbon Kevlar. I've designed a lot of products using carbon Kevlar. I've worked with carbon Kevlar. I really am a big fan. They use a recycled carbon Kevlar. And then the advantages of a carbon Kevlar is that it's very lightweight for its strength. So you can get a product that weighs less and is just as strong. I also like the uh, new form factor of the grub can. So um, I decided to take a chance order. So, like I said, this is our, you know, our first look at it. Um, we're going to take it out on the trail and uh, do some testing with that. The first thing uh, that I, I know is that the advantage of the grub can is that it is lighter, but it's still significantly heavy. Put this on the scale and um, it is 834 grams or uh, 29.4 ounces or one pound 13 ounces that's um significant you know um, and so you're basically adding a pound and a half over the bear bag however you're you're paying you're paying in weight for the convenience of you know you get to to camp you're tired you set up your tent and you just put that down and you you're ready to go um you know you don't locate it near your tent but, uh it's pretty easy to get to so how does the grub can work in terms of locking. Well, if you look here, um, I'll do some close-ups. There is a arrow on the lid and then there's a bump or a little raised area on the rings. So you line up the raised rings, er, you line up the ridges underneath the arrow and then the top comes off. So that's actually pretty simple. And then to reverse it, of course, you, you, you spin the things and now it's locked. Um, I think I'm going to make one modification after looking at this, and that is that, um, especially if it's night, and, and maybe it's my older eyes, but uh, this diamond pointer, I don't know if you see it there, is uh, kind of hard to see. And these ridges are not as obvious. Um, so I, I think I'm just going to take a paint pen and uh, mark these uh, so that they stand out, especially at night or dusk or dawn. Um, and so let's see how much food we can actually fit in this thing. 
My goal is to get three or four days worth of food inside of here. Um, I don't remember what the actual capacity is in terms of size. So um, I'm going to put some food in here. Understand that I think on the actual through hike I'll be um, I'll be repackaging a lot of this food into plastic baggies. Um, so it definitely would take up a lot less space, but there's one dinner, two dinners, um, Lenny and Larry's complete cookies, two different flavors of those. I got uh, Heather's Choice pack of roos. These are quite good, by the way. So a couple of snacks. Put in three dinners. Breakfast. Four dinners. I have a lot of room left over, so I could put in a cold soap jar or or my stove kit. Um, yeah, and there's definitely enough room now for toothbrush, toothpaste, any other things I have in my uh, in my kit. Um, so, does that answer the question of can you fit four days of worth of food in there? I think yes, definitely can. Um, especially when you realize that day one, you don't really have to carry in here. You know, day one can be outside and then you eat it before you go to sleep. So, you're really only carrying, if it's a four day uh, hike, you're only carrying three days worth of food. Um, so, anyways, I think for me on the AT, that's pretty much four days is pretty much the longest, with a few exceptions, maybe when the 100 mile wilderness, but I'll, pretty much the longest uh, distance I'll be hiking without resupplying or going into town. So, um, yeah, pretty happy with that. There's still a lot of space. There's room all the way up in here and goes up into there, so you can see it doesn't go down in there and uh, should be able to hold quite a bit. I actually wonder if I could actually hold enough for two people for a couple days. I think I can. Um, yeah. So, so what's the negative of this product versus um, the other bear canisters? Assuming you've already decided to go with a bear canister, um, because you can do the positive and negatives of bear canister versus a bear bag or versus um, an ursac. Um, so, uh, but for this versus the other bear canisters, one of them again is that form factor. Um, I find that this works well to um, put inside of my backpack. I can carry it below or above and strap it on. Um, I did try that. I used my uh, Kakwa, my Durston Kakwa 40, and um, what I found was this is about a half inch too long to fit well into a Kakwa 40 horizontally. You can fit it vertically, but I think that is a bit unfortunate to do that. You're actually kind of maybe getting a little lopsided and you got to pack things around it. Um, however, I found that in the Kakwa 55, my Durston Kakwa 55, this thing fit perfect. This is the, the latest version of the Cockwood 55. I have a, the older version too from the first drop that Dan Durston did. Um, this is the brand new one and um, I, I got this one because it has some new features that I like. Um, the, the front pocket's a little bigger. Anyways, well, I'll go into that in a separate video. But uh, yeah, so the question was is does this fit in there? And yeah, it fits right in the top that you can see. And you can you know, do your roll up and flat down. Or again, you can carry it, you know, like many people do with bear cans, you can carry it over. I just think that this versus the bear vaults just looks a lot less cumbersome. Um, and maybe it's just me and not necessarily a real problem, but I just, I like this form factor better. I felt like the, the sort of curved ridges, I know they're put in there for strength, 
but also worked well to, if you're strapping, to kind of locate the, the bear canister slipping out sideways. So, yeah, that was, that was the other thing about the bear canister that I liked was the, the, the sort of the way I could put the straps in there and hold it down if I was tying it on top. Um, I do like being able to put it in the pack because it gets the weight down a little bit lower, especially when it's full. It's, it's a relatively a good amount of weight that I'm carrying. The other negative of the grub can is that it, uh, it's not cheap. Um, it's just, I think it's $297 on, on their site and a little bit for shipping. Um, I don't think that's a lot for what it is. Um, I've worked with, again, I've worked with carbon Kevlar and it's not a cheap product. Um, it's not as easy to make as uh, molding, you know, something out of just pure plastic in a, an injection mold. Once you pay for the cost of the molding, then the price is very cheap. Carbon Kevlar uh, is more expensive. Um, so it really kind of comes down to what the weight is worth to you. Again, this is, um, what we say, one pound and 13 ounces. So, you know, just shy of two pounds. Whereas like the bear vaults are, I think over three pounds. The small bear vault, I think is, uh, is two pounds, one ounce. So it's really, so when you compare this to the bear vault 450, um, I think the amount that you can carry in it is probably close. The again, the form factor is different. The Bear Vault 450 is under $100, so it's significantly cheaper. It weighs more, it's at 33 ounces. So you're looking at two pounds, one ounces. So you're, you're paying significantly more if you like the looks, if you like the form factor, and if the less weight, um, the, the way it locks, and as compared to the, the, the depressed tabs on the Bear Vault, if all that works for you, then this is the way to go. Um, but again, everybody's going to hike their own hike. So um, we'll next take it out uh, on an overnight in a couple days and uh, do some filming there and see how it goes. All right, so using the bear canister, we'll uh, line up the notches. And pull off the top, that was easy. We just threw all our toiletries in here because some of the things have scents, and anything with a scent needs to be put away. We have a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. So. This is my breakfast.